Okay, so I'm just telling you right now, I'm not editing that out. <laughs> like, we've just had lunch. <laughs> and when you were talking, I could feel and hear my stomach rumble. And I was like, great, I hope that hasn't <laughs> caught that. But that man might have just zoned it out. and welcome back to my channel today i am with this little salt <laughs> hey today we are just going to be having a little q a with ellie as she is a flight attendant <laughs> Apologies if you can hear cars in the background. We couldn't do this in Weatherspoons. Mm. Awkward with people watching. Yeah. Too many people. So just a quick little background about Ellie. She used to be a flight attendant and then her company went bankrupt. Awkward. I mean, but it's good for me because I got to meet you, so. Then she sort of came to the hotel that I work at and yeah, we just sort of hit it off from there we really, clicked. didn't we? She's sort of, she's like one of the, I say one of the only people that can, we can both be in a really, really, really foul mood, and but as soon as we're up. together, <laughs> we just cheer each other up like instantly. Yeah, but then we're back in a bad mood again, but we're not yeah. in a bad mood with each other. No, we just sort of run and then carry on. <laughs> run. That was so fun. Run. But yeah, and now she is leaving again because she's now going to go work for a different airline. So I just wanted to catch her before she goes and I just wanted to answer some of my questions and some popular questions that is out there about flight attendants. Enjoy. Right, okay, so how long have you been a flight attendant for? Seven months. That was all. <laughs> Not that is that including, like... My training. When you're... No, that's literally like just how long I flew for. So it's over a year, basically. Hmm. Who were you with before? Premier Air. They went bankrupt. <laughs> what is the interview process like? Horrible. So with my old airline, I applied online and then had a face-to-face -face interview that lasted like with the assessment. So you had a group assessment when you got there. You got to like meet everyone and mm. awkwardly talk about all how nervous you are and you're all like... But um, that one was easier. But British Airways, I had... To apply online watch a load of videos and answer how i'd sort the situation out before i even got to send my application off before i even got to send my cv really? yeah so i then sent those off and then got a reply back saying i had an assessment day so my assessment day started at 7 30 a.m at heathrow which was very very early oh see so yeah, this is going to be the second time you're flying, flying out of heathrow no i flew out of stansted before Ooh. i was there from half seven till half past two in the afternoon so you had a group assessment and then they were seeing how you read things and how you dealt with situations and how you dealt with things as a team and then you had your face-to-face -face interview where you had one person that was like the nice person asking nice questions and you had the other one like picking at every question that he asked but um it was fine <laughs> <laughs> what is the training process like so my first one was six weeks long and very very intense because I was put in a group of people that had flown before and obviously I hadn't flown before so I need to be taught everything from scratch and it's really long really hard work and a lot of exams um yeah because you know I said that I watched that girl on YouTube yeah she was saying that when she done her like training thing mm. it's like you have classes every single day yeah and then you so, have to do like the whole water I don't have to do it thing this enough. time, but I did it last time and I hated the water drill. But I just, I don't like swimming, so that's why I don't like Do you have to boat. jump out of a plane, like faux plane, into no, a pool? No, so they basically, well, you had to put a life jacket on in the water and you're like fully clothed and 
that like freaks me out in general and just having a life jacket on is just the most uncomfortable thing in the world like literally mine was like once i was in it my life jacket was like round here so i was just like floating in the water well you're tiny yeah. anyway so you can imagine like a little floater like it's like hi hello. and then we had to climb in a life raft and i just remember the instructor like, literally like shoving me up into this life raft because i couldn't oh, long training well it feels long but it goes really quick at the same time yeah and it's like once it's over then that's it for a year until you have your annual exams again hmm. you have exams every year to test your knowledge and check you still know what you're doing so this one i didn't know whether i was going to ask you but i'm going to do it anyway because i think me and you have actually spoken about it before okay um do you earn good money if you work for it you can earn good money yeah it's not bad when it comes to like the money side of stuff mm. like do you have like set wages like you do You've got a basic salary and then you can earn stuff on, stuff on top of it. So you get like a flying allowance, your commission and stuff like that. So it all adds up. Where's the nicest place you've flown to? I loved Boston because there was a beach nearby and I saw a fire engine for the first time there. You know, the American <laughs> ones. Literally, I love the American buses, like school buses, the yeah. other ones. And I love fire engines over there. And the You're fleet. such a weird cookie. <laughs> I loved Boston and Toronto. Everyone was just really friendly. Like you're trying to like take. They a photo. do say that Canadians are very, very, yeah, very friendly. They are really friendly. So I was on the train and we were a bit lost, like standard. And um, this Canadian woman, she was like, "Oh, y'all looking a bit lost. Like, are you okay?" And we were like, uh, "We're a little bit lost." She was like, "She was like, oh my gosh, you're from the UK, blah blah." blah. And they literally go nuts when they know you're from the UK. Mm -hmm. Hi, to all just Canadian people. Hi. <laughs> and I've got an American follower. Hi. <laughs> Do you fly for free or do you get discounts? So like if you want to do like a personal. So I flew my mum and sister to Boston for the 4th of July. So they were there for like American Independence Day in mm -hmm. Boston. And they got a standby ticket, which is basically if there's space on the plane, they can get on and they only, they've only got to pay the airport taxes. So do, is that what you would do as well? Yeah, or I think we can get on if there's a jump seat available, but I don't know how it works with British Airways. What's a jump seat? The seats that the crew sit on which is the most uncomfortable thing in the world oh it's like a pull down seat that's actually like this so it's a little bit like my bag seat then can you personally give free upgrades to people we did on a few occasions when there was um like changes of aircraft so there was a family that was meant to be sitting together and then they changed the aircraft at the last minute so it changed the configuration of the plane so we then moved them up so they could all sit together but we don't normally if so, how can I get them? By speaking to me. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really weird laugh. <laughs> it's can't be like my sarcasm on your day where I went, huh, at work. <laughs> I face, Martin said something and I turned around and I wanted to laugh, but I didn't find it that funny. So I just went, huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I would have loved to see that. <laughs> how do you pass the time on boring flights? Reading mainly i read so many books so do you get downtime yeah so once you've done everything um you get like your breaks as such but normally they're not like a fully you can sit down for half an hour break it's like if a call bell goes off you've got to go up and get it but um yeah sit there reading i think the worst ones are the night flights because there's like not a lot to do at all because obviously everyone sleeps mm. but um i read many many books do flight attendants and pilots date yes have you ever dated a pilot? No. I have friends that are pilots and I've got friends that are cabin crew. One of my friends, she's with a pilot and they're very happy together and they work for the same airline again now. Oh. So they fly around together. It's very cute. And what's the worst part about being a flight attendant? Um, you miss a lot of family events and your body clock's always messed up. So. You wake up at like three o'clock in the morning thinking you're ready to set out for the day, but everyone's still sleeping. <laughs> That's like my normal life. Then. <laughs> you could be a flight attendant then. <laughs> Have you or anyone you know been oh. in the Mile High Club? No. It's <laughs> Not really that I know of. Like... No. Have you been in the Mile High Club, Ellie? No. <laughs> no. Um, I don't know anyone that has, but I don't really think anyone... Have you witnessed to anyone trying to do it? Well, I saw a man and woman going to the toilet together. Who is the worst passenger you've ever witnessed? a group of 30 stags at the back of the plane jumping when we landed basically so we were taxiing towards the gate and the seatbelt sign went off and obviously we landed oh so you weren't in the air no because i could picture you like coming down no. and then taking their seatbelts <laughs> off and 
No. So I've had a few where um, we landed and there was a group of 30 um, stag people going to Malaga. And then um, we got to the gate and they started jumping and the whole plane was basically going like that and they just wouldn't stop. So we called the police and they were at the gate to help. Oh and I also God. had a woman that she would just landed across the runway and um, she was saying that she needed to go to the toilet, that she was desperate. So um, she basically got up. So literally as we touched down and started slowing down across the runway, she got up and was walking along to the front. And we were all shouting like, sit down, because then you could have a rejected takeoff, a rejected landing, which is where you land. There could be something the pilots have to take off. In that case, you'd go flying. But we we're in the wrong, apparently, for not letting her go to the toilet. Yeah. Um, I think I know this one, but do you get ill a lot? Yes, I have had blocked ears. I've had loads of water infections because you get dehydrated when you fly. Mm. And you're in a metal tube full of germs for hours on end. It's not the most hygienic place to be, is it? Nope. People walking around with no shoes on and bleh, disgusting. Well, especially like people like me and you because we don't eat really mm. great, do we? No, not at all. Who's the best supervisor you've ever had? Oh, God, where do I start? <laughs> this one! <laughs> My favourite person, Bottle Bin Buddies. <laughs> it is weird though because I think we've spoken about this before where like I said like when I first sort of met you... It's always the people that I don't think I'm going to get on with and yeah. like that I do yeah. genuinely really, really like. When I started, I swear everyone hated me. <laughs> no, right. So I'm one of these people where if someone doesn't bother to make an effort with me mm. or like, you know, say hi or whatever, then I'm not going to bother with them. Yeah. Like I'll say hi, but if they're not going to bother making an effort with me, then I'm just not going to bother with them. Mm. Was it easy to become a flight attendant? Like, do you mm. have to have any like qualifications or anything? I've got my travel and tourism qualifications um which i think helped but i never actually did anything like to do with cabin crew stuff but they like it when you've got customer service background so when you've been like talking to people mm. and stuff like that on a daily basis they like stuff like that so if you weren't a flight attendant what would you want to do oh work back at this one <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jokes. Sounds weird. I've always wanted to be a police officer. Have you? Yeah. PCLE. <laughs> no, I've just, I don't know. I just like the idea of doing it. Yeah, I'd love to be a police officer. Oh, I wouldn't have expected that. You get to drive fast cars, don't you? <laughs> have you ever been hit on? What, when flying? Yeah. I had someone give me their number on a paper napkin when they got off the plane. Did they just like hand it to you awkwardly and walk off? Well, I thought it was rubbish at first. And he was like, don't put it in the bin. I was like, okay. And I looked, I was like, okay. <laughs> You're going straight in the bin. Yeah. <laughs> bin time. <laughs> what are your shifts like for a month? Like, do you get them in advance? You get your roster a month in advance. So I used to get mine towards the end of the month for the next month. So you can literally plan everything. But obviously it's not always stable. Like they can change it. If can you be. change your shifts if you want to? Like, Not really, no. if you want a swap? If I want to swap a flight with someone, I probably could do that. But I couldn't say, I don't want this trip, I want to work the day after instead. Because it's all to do with, like, your hours of flying. Is that what you get paid for? Like, when you're on the plane? Yeah, so from the moment you take off to the moment you land. Is it easy to keep a relationship? It's not easy, no. Like, especially with me and Will as well, because he is in the army. And, um... <laughs> He's in the army. The army. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's hard for me and him because obviously he'd be home at weekends and I could have had during the week off and I could then be flying at the weekend and then you've got time difference and stuff like that. Mm. But you make it work because you do obviously get time together and then when I'm off work, I always go and see him. So it can Because I, I can't remember like exactly what you said and like how we got into the conversation, but we were talking about it. Mm. a while ago and you said that you actually get more free time you get loads like i literally work probably just over half a month with like my days off and everything so um yeah i get to see him a lot more than what i do working like at the hotel is there a height slash weight requirement there is a height requirement um because i feel obviously like being a bigger person like, I feel like I would be, like, Mr. Blobby walking down the aisle. No, not at all. <laughs> like, like, I'd be, be kicking strict. over everything and be like, way. <laughs> no, literally, like, not at all. They used to have, like, 
weight things but obviously like they've got rid of all that now it's just height that matters like one of my friends got told he's too tall and then loads of my friends really think, yeah because like basically like, i know that small. you've got to be able to touch that overhead locker yeah yeah you've got to be able to do that and then you've got to be able to reach the manual release handle on a slide whilst holding onto the door so you've got to hold a handle and then reach to pull something to check that you can do both hmm. but um yeah one of my friends got told he was too tall to work on like one of the smaller planes so he wasn't allowed oh which god sad. so this is one that i'm like really intrigued on okay. so do you have to go through security yes like everyone else yeah but we've got like a crew security and it's exactly the same we've got to fit everything in a liquids bag we've got like the weight limits and stuff like that it's exactly the same but it's supposed to be quicker but sometimes it's not so you still got to have like the small tiny liquids bag sealed and mm. take your ipads out so it's like, like a, it is like a completely separate sort of like security place then, yeah. just for you guys then. yeah but in the airport there's like still um do you get jet lag you've already answered this question yes <laughs> <laughs> I won so I landed back from a flight one time and I was really really tired I went to take like a two hour power nap that turned into seven hours woke up at like 11 o'clock at night and was like fucked it I'm gonna be awake all night now I watched tv for like an hour and went back to sleep for another eight hours it was amazing <laughs> yeah jet lag is a horrible thing <laughs> you just sort of learn to get on with it though yeah just gotta fight through it well i mean i'm constantly tired all the time so i don't really think that if i was a flight attendant it would really change mm. you'd be like suited to it um yeah i think you've also answered this one as well do you have breaks on long haul flights slash what do you do that you've really answered that you do have breaks i know with british airways you get crew rest on some of the planes so you've got mm. like beds on the plane that you can sleep on mm. which is like amazing because the amount of times i took naps in the flight deck for our crew rest when there was no seats available we used to be able to um like cone like not cone off you know like say don't sit on these and we used to be able to sleep on them on like a long flight but um sometimes people would move and obviously you then can't move them so um naps in the flight deck were always <laughs> good things um okay so i don't know if this one is true mm. because i think that i've heard it or i just made it up okay. so it's just one of these mm -hmm. um is it true that diet coke fizzes more than normal coke i don't know and do you give the whole can out because yeah. I, when i was looking at all these questions there was loads of people that were saying why don't people give out full cans they're like little mini cans but um the thing is like if you've been in turbulence the worst thing is when you give drinks out you're like oh is it going to explode is it going to explode but they're only like mini cans like mm. that with some of them but i don't know if it fizzes more or not. i don't drink coke so I only drink lemonade. So, just a really random question that I've just come up with. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like, if you go and, like, order hot food or whatever at the airport? Yeah. You can take that on the plane, can't you? Yeah. Okay, I'm just checking for when I go to Turkey. I used to bring snacks, because plane food's that not very nice. Me. Oh, I lived off snacks. It's just the food on a plane's not nice. It's got more salt in, which makes you more thirsty, and... Is it? Just, yeah. So they change, they put more salt because apparently your taste buds change when they're up in the sky. Just like when you're on the ground, if you're drunk, you can't board the plane because to do with the altitude and the pressure in the sky it makes you more drunk. So some people could be fine on the ground, but they got up in the sky and you. So thought, there's not like an actual reason, like they're, they're not just like bullshitting basically hmm. when they say, oh, drunk people can't be on planes. There's a natural reason why. Yeah. Because hmm. there was someone on a flight, was it from. It's an easy jet flight the other week and they tried to open the door of the plane when it was up in the sky. Drunk. The hell? Yeah. Do you get scared when flying still? No. Not even if there's like bad turbulence? No, not at all. Okay, so this is sort of like my last sort of question, but it's not really a question. Do you have any like secrets or anything that you want to add? <laughs> oh, it's going to hit me. <laughs> um you're not going <laughs> you're not leaving um no not that i can think of hmm. no i think you got those good questions i mean yeah i was hunting around but i was only hunting around <laughs> for about 10 minutes so <laughs> these are what i found in 10 minutes They're good questions thanks ellie thanks <laughs> thanks thank you <laughs> <laughs> thanks thanks guys thank you so much thanks for watching bye <laughs> so thanks for watching if you enjoyed it like 
subscribe, share, tune in for more. <laughs> Down here. Bye! <laughs> I will talk to you soon.